Hello everyone, watch this review here where they look at the DC Direct Live Wire from the Superman Batman The Search for Kryptonite Line, Series 7. A live wire is a character that I've always really liked. Um, she's also one of those characters that first made its appearance in the animated series. She was kind of a uh, jerky shock jock who came to literally live up to that moniker when she refused to call off a concert and got zapped by lightning while Superman was trying to protect her and somehow she got powers from it. In general, you kind of realize that the, well, you'll kind of notice that the animated series really opened the door more for female characters. Um, Harley Quinn also made her debut and stuff people like Rocket Red and stuff went on to have a few appearances in the comics. I mean, in comics, um, I guess rogues galleries are more like boys clubs and everything, just because the majority of the antagonists for any male superhero will be male, and then, you know, for any female superhero will also well, will be a mix of male and female. Um, largely, I think, just stems from a really kind of uh, sexism that you don't really think about as much, and it's actually the socially or semi-socially acceptable sexism of chivalry and stuff like that where you know when you have a female villain cop pop up you can't have them like get hit by the male characters as much just because of the whole gender thing and that's might be why we don't see as many female villains fighting um male heroes and generally when they do they end up like catwoman stuff where they serve sort of a romantic foil for the character and go straight for a while but Hold on a second and I'll get her out pack. Livewire comes with a stand with the emblem, I guess, for the series, as well as two energy projectiles. One with the energy orb with lightning trailing off, the other one just being lightning. Kind of neat, I guess they're also a little bit cheap on the other hand. Now, because this character probably won't get many figures, um, it's great that they really hit this one out of the park. Uh, the only real complaint I have for this are just the hands here. I mean, they're both pretty lousy. On one hand, we have a uh, sort of open one here to hold the energy orb. I believe that's what it's intended for. Uh, the other one is a sort of handout, like she's pushing a character. For instance, she's saying, get away, Superman. For um, scale, let's just bring in the DC Universe Classics Wave 6 um, Superman. So, I mean, she does perfectly fit in with the DC Universe Classics line, which likely will never release the live wire. Because Mattel kind of sucks in that regard in bringing us our female characters. Uh, Color-wise, you know, just a really nice mix of color, although, you know, it's kind of, at the same time, it's just more or less like shading because she has a sort of plain outfit. You'll notice there's a bit of variation stuff on her hair, which gives it that rich pop, and then it's basically just the shading that they, or tone that they use for the uh, skin here. Uh, the black portions look like they might have some sort of additional maybe it's just the fact that they have this little glittery aspect to it which sort of gives it the appearance of a really rich looking color and um you know definitely very impressive looking articulation wise she does kind of suffer because dc direct characters never give us the well we never get the ankle pivot or ankle joints period on dc directs and then you know, the legs don't get as much movement or anything, but a uh, quick run through of articulation. We have a point of rotation here at the wrist, single joint at the elbow, ball jointed shoulder, which doesn't seem to go out very far for some reason. And yeah, just kind of a weak joint. Head rotates. Feels like it has some up and down, but you can't really get a good range going on. And then we have this really generous um, point of articulation up here at the bust line, which um, goes a full 360 in addition to forward back. It's actually pretty impressive, the range in this. I wish that they would have done more articulation like this for this, just because it's, um, you know, 
very impressive, especially for this line. Leg kicks forward. Can also go back a bit. Single joint here at the knee, and then, of course, nothing at the ankle. All in all, um, you know, not a ton of articulation or anything, but it's just a really nice looking sculpt. Uh, they did capture the character beautifully and everything, and I, mean, I guess the accessory choice is kind of neat. I'm not sure if you're supposed to attach this to this hand or this hand. I previously saw this figure reviewed actually a few times, and I can't remember how they did it, but, you know, very cool. And, I mean, if we never see another figure of her again, I mean, we definitely have this really kind of decent, sort of awesome version that, you know, I feel just really gets the likeness down in terms of uh, actually a more realistic likeness than, say, the cartoon anyway. Even if, um, you know, we don't get quite as much articulation as I might have liked. But yeah, very awesome sculpt. The torso joint up here is, again, really awesome, and I'm saying awesome a lot, so I will end that this review on that note before I begin griping about the fact that they had some kind of crappy hand choices here, although, you know, this does look like a sort of force lightning-y pose. So this has been a look at Livewire, the DC Direct version from the Superman-Batman Search for Kryptonite line. Until next time, folks.